So I'm Betty Martin. I'm, this is my new friend Harry Fattis, and he's the inventor of the three minute game, which if you watch any of the other my stuff, you know that that's the centerpiece of my work. It taught me so much. Hi, I'm Harry Fattis, and I, we are talking today from the Easton Mountain Retreat Center in upstate New York, where I am a resident. I am a life coach and former instructor at the Body Electric School, where I developed the workshop Power, Surrender, and Intimacy, called PSI, and also during that time, the three-minute game, which uh, Betty had found <laughs> out about and uh, is, has some enthusiasm for propagating. So more people will know about the three-minute game because of Betty's work, so I'm very happy about that. Thank you. Before I lived here, I lived in San Francisco, and uh, I lived also in Sonoma County in Sebastopol, and I was working at the Body Electric School, uh, which has a retreat center at Wildwood in, at the Russian River. And I became an instructor for the Body Electric School in the 90s. And there was a recurring reality that I was working mostly with men, that men did not know how to ask for what they want. Yeah. And there was this poem by Rumi, uh, which said, you must ask for what you really want. And everybody was saying that. Right. But nobody knew how to do it. Yeah. And it would be a blank. Tell me what you want. Well, I don't know. Do what you're doing, or do what you want to do. And uh, I thought, this is, an, this is a beautiful admonition mm -hmm. from a poet. And it seems easy, but nobody knows how to do it. Yeah. And my mind is, in one level, try to solve a problem. Try to, how could we do that? Mm -hmm. And I was teaching, I, I uh, created a workshop for the Body Electric School called Power, Surrender, and Intimacy, which was from the secret behind the creation was that I am in, I'm a recovered alcoholic for 28 years. And there is a step in the 12-step program, and it says, made a decision to turn my life and my will over to the care of a power greater than myself. Mm. So I thought, mentally, I, I, I can think about this. I can't figure it out. Mm -hmm. Emotionally, I get it, but I don't have the feeling that I've done that. How do you know? And then I thought, well, if somebody tied me up, mm -hmm. my life would be, if you tied me yes. up, my life would be in your care. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, turn my life and my will, my will yeah. over. I would know I'm doing it. Yeah. And this would create uh, an intimate bond between us. Yeah. So in creating this workshop, I thought, how am I going to get these guys to do this? Nothing, nothing works really. So I don't know whether it was the thinking about it, but it just, these words came to me one day, tell me what you would like me to do to you. And I thought, oh, that's really simple. Yeah. So that's how it started. Uh, and it's, it, it's, it happened as a three minute thing Mm -hmm. Because we all have these elaborate fantasies. Mm -hmm. Maybe, I don't know you, I've just met you. Right. Maybe yours would be, you would like to be in a pavilion <laughs> and sensuously pleasured by 12 or 15 people because you're beautiful and you deserve it. But how are you going to get this assemblage together? Yeah. It's not likely to happen unless you pay a group of people to do it. So I thought, we, there's one thing to explore our fantasies in a way that when, if I'm in a personal engagement with you, that you don't ask me for any of those fantasies mm -hmm. because we are here and we are now. One person, one person. Mm -hmm. What could I do for you or what could you do for me in three minutes that I would accept either as a giver or receiver that we could accomplish? And at the end of that, you would be able to say, I asked for it, mm -hmm. I got it, and I'm grateful. Mm. That is the key thing here. Yeah. 
or maybe I, I'm grateful and the next time I do it, I would like to tweak it. Yeah. Or yeah. something like, oh, I should have asked for that. Or, yeah. So the more you play it, uh, the more you learn what you don't want. You thought you wanted yeah. it, but you don't want it. Yeah. Or, I, I remember people in the workshop would say, well, all right, I, I don't like spanking. So I, I would say, well, that's good. You figured out your list mm -hmm. of what I don't like. Mm -hmm. And what, but what do you like? Let's get that list going. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, what, and you can, you can, uh, you can do that in three minutes a lot of times in ways that you could not actually do if you had a longer time. That's right. Yeah. And some people like to expand it to five minutes and uh, it's a very good, if you're having an intimate uh, encounter with one other person, it's a very good way to get started. And a lot of people ask for, uh, before the Big Bang happens, let's have some foreplay or yeah. some mood setting things. Yeah. And this is, I'll just, it's a typical female male conversation. A woman will say, but you don't spend enough time beforehand. Mm -hmm. And the guy doesn't understand that. What, what do you want me to do? <laughs> you know? And she has no clue how to ask. How to say that. Yeah. Isn't that yeah. this just bizarre? Yeah, yeah it is. So if you would say, I would like you to rub my back for three minutes, any guy is, or girl is going to say, well, I could do that. Yeah, yeah. I could do that at three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Then we're connected yeah. in some way. So the, the synopsis, or the way I learned it, it the, the workshop that you designed, which I took later, is two questions, two people. Each person asks the other person, both questions, so you're taking turns, and each question is an offer. So the questions are, what do you want me to do to you, and what do you want to do to me? So when I say, what do you want me to do to you, I'm offering you my service. Yes. And you get to decide what you want. So ask me the question. What do you want me to do to you, Harry, for so three minutes? in the workshop, she's A and I'm B, and it gets so confusing with people because they can't believe this is happening, that you have to write it down and you have to give an A and a B. So yeah. you're A. What would you like me to do to you for three minutes, Harry? I would like you to rub my neck. Then I have to decide, is this something that I'm okay with? And I take a moment, in my workshops I encourage people to take a notice. Is that a gift that I can give with a full heart? Yeah, I'd be glad to do that. And then we negotiate, you want to turn around or whatever. And then we do that for Yes. So then, ask me again. So then, the same one? Yes. Okay. What do you want me to do to you for three minutes, Harry? I would like you to kiss my neck. Okay, then I think about that. Is that something that I'm happy to do? Or I might need more details. Well, on the side, on the back, you want to be sloppy or yes. sweet? All okay. Over. Okay, sure. I'll oh, do she's that. <laughs> <laughs> so I wanted you to oh, say. Oh, if I say no, if yes. I say. Oh, I'm not really comfortable with that. Get a plan B? Yeah, so you're saying, I don't want to do that, but I'm willing to do something else. Yeah. So when you... So I'm willing to kiss you gently, but not sloppily. Okay. Is that okay? So then I could say, yes, I'll take that. Mm -hmm. But, so you get an opportunity to say, no, thank you, in a way that continues the conversation to something else. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a refusal. So between two people, there is something that she must be willing to do. Yes, then we'll find something. And we'll find something. Talking, yeah. So then now I'm A and you're B. Tell me what uh, you would like me to do to you. Ah, oh, hmm. And I pause and notice, what is it that I really want? And this is the hardest part for most people, actually. Because this is here and now. Yeah. This is not five minutes ago. Right. Or this yeah. is not five minutes from now. Yeah. This is, this is real. So I check in with my, okay, what, what, what part of my body is talking to me saying, do me, do me. And I notice at this moment, the back of my neck and my head, I would love for you to scratch my back of my neck up into my head really nice and slow. And I want to lean over and sort of lean my head on your chest for you to do that. Would you do that? Um. She, mo yeah. Betty, modeled that you have to just not say yes or no, you have to think about it. And then I would say, I would love to do that. Cool. 
So then she would put her head here and I would do that for three minutes and the timekeeper would say, bomb, time is up. You honor that time is up. And that's the first part of the game. Yeah. The question being, tell me what you would like to do to me. Wait, that's the second question. Oh, tell me <laughs> what you would like me to do to you. Yeah. Yeah. So the second question is A and B. Um, t let's see. What do you want to do to me? Or tell me what you want to do to me. Yes. Yeah. So I have to think, I have to look at Betty and think, what would I like to do to her? And I have to come up with something. I don't want to be offhand. Mm -hmm. So I have to, you know, there's some part of Betty that is pulling me. And I would say, I would like to uh, have you stand up. And I would like to touch your arms to your shoulders up and down. So then it's my turn to notice, is that something I'm okay with? Am I willing to give him that gift? Yeah, I'd be happy to do that. So then we do that. Okay. And then we reverse, I'm A and Betty's B, and I would say, tell me what you want to do to me. Oh, what a lovely <laughs> invitation. It's scary it because scary. sometimes we hear, I want to smack you, or I want to, we hear all this stuff that's been done to us that has not been pleasant. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm saying, this is, she has the ability to have some power over me. Yeah. Tell me what you want to do to me. And, and what you're offering with that, in the, in the first question you offer, I'm here, I'm going to be of service to you. In this offer, you're offering me you, your body, basically. Yes. So how I want to play with you. I'd like for you to put your head in my lap, and I'd like to explore your hair and your whiskers and your face. Just sort of feel around. So my first thought is only three minutes. <laughs> I would love that. So it's a deal, and then it's we do that for three minutes. Yeah. And if it's not, say you had a, a, a limit, and in my workshops, I, I, we, we do one round where you set a limit even if you have to make one up. So you have to practice of it. So it might be like, yes, you can do that, but not my beard or whatever, some limit that you might have. Um, because as you said on the first one, there is something that you're willing to give, that you're, that you're happy to give. And it's up to you to find what that is so that you're happy yes. to give it and you're not begrudgingly giving it. You can be in this exchange with somebody who is the absolute opposite of somebody you like. It could be somebody you would say is too old or too fat or too whatever. But when you look at somebody, there's something that I can offer you mm -hmm. that is based on our human condition. Mm -hmm. We are not going to have an intimate exchange sexually or I am not promising you that we're going to get married. I am simply giving you three minutes mm -hmm. of my undivided attention. Mm -hmm. No matter who that is, if you, if you can recognize the person's humanity, mm -hmm. then we're in the, in the conversation. And if you're not, then you need, your, your inability to join in this would indicate some work that you need to do. Yeah, yeah. Of wh where you're holding back or... Yeah, uh, yeah it's it, that, that the opportunity to ask for what we want, uh, oftentimes is nothing scarier. And, or we don't even know what to get most often as well. What if I don't know what I want? No problem. We'll just wait till you do. Because it'll take, it, what if it takes a while? No problem. A lot of people, certain personalities, don't know what they want. Mm -mm. They are completely open to you running the show mm -hmm. and then feeling unsatisfied. Right, because they didn't get what they mm -hmm. actually wanted, but they didn't notice that they wanted or didn't admit that they wanted or I can certainly been guilty of that. So when I'm using this at, at work, a lot of with clients, a lot of it is um, bringing them back to the fact that it's their turn. Mm -hmm. Because most of us, I've found, don't really know how to have a turn that's for us. We're so used to going along with whatever we think is most happening.
that um, the fact that knowing how to have a turn that's for me was something that I also learned in co-counseling. Oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. How to take turns. When it's my turn, it is my turn. And within the limits of what you're willing to give, it's for me, baby, and I want the way I want it. And when it's your turn, I'm putting aside what I want, and I'm going with what you want within the limits that I can. And the ability to take those apart is a very different experience than having this conversation. Like right now, we're having a conversation. And if I were to say, how do you want me to listen to you for five minutes so you can do your thing, this is what co-counsel me, then it's your turn. And those are very different. They, what I've noticed for me and for most people is that they meet a very different need. Mm -hmm. Having Being able to take a turn and know who it's for and how to use your turn uh, in a way that's useful and feeds you. Yes. That's pretty rare. And you were forbidden to have one-way sessions where... Yes, you always took turns. You had to do Yes, that. yes. And there were people who always took care of other people who would say, oh, I don't really need that hour. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're not allowed to do <laughs> that's that. That's right. And that's true in the three-minute game as well. Yes, it is. Yeah. And there's also a way that the three-minute game can be used to point to wounds that need healing. Mm -hmm. Say more. For example, I may be in a state where I don't want to be touched, and here I am in the three-minute game. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you say to me, tell me what you would like me to do to you. Say mm -hmm. that. How would you like me to touch you today? I don't want to be touched. I am so... don't want you to touch me. And then you would say... Great, I'll just sit here and not touch you for three minutes. No, but what would you <laughs> what like would you me to do? What would you like yeah. me to do? Oh, is there something else you'd like me to do yeah. to not touch? So I would have yeah. to think. I yeah. have all my energy on this. Yeah. Say I'm, I'm a survivor of sexual abuse or something. Yeah. Physical abuse. Yeah. So, so you still have my three minutes. What That's other right. way would you like That's to right. do? That's right. So now I have to think of a new pathway. Yeah. To allow somebody to get close to ah, me. Ah, yeah, yeah. Without this thing. Yeah. So I would think and I would say, well, if you could hold your hands about this far from my face and just watch me, mm. would you do that? I'd be glad to do that. And then you would do what? Yeah, and then I would do that. And then what's that to me? And then yeah. I would do that. Yeah. yeah. And so, so my job here is the, in giving is I don't have to know what's going on with you. No. Not at all. And don't do... But it's do, useful to you, and so that's a good enough reason. Don't do anything but this. Is exactly right. Don't do don't this. Do, do, don't think do, you're going to test me. <laughs> you're going to see, you know, just do this. I'm going to do some juju. Here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Don't. So there's a lot of this in the three-minute game that is, that is about being. Mm -hmm. I, you allow me to be in a state of being, and you're in a state of being, and don't do anything that was not requested. Yeah. So if you're rubbing my ears, and then you, you look at my neck and you think, oh, he might need some work, you're right. a chiropractor. <laughs> don't go down to my neck. That's right. It's not allowed. That is exactly right. Do what your intention is. So that's another way of creating uh, uh, an intention for it, something. Yeah. For just three minutes, and it's hard, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I think they'd like this, or I'm yeah. tired of doing this. And it's very, it, what often happens, particularly for practitioners who I work with mostly these days, is that your hands just sort of do what they do. It's fairly intuitive, and so you just trust them, and they just let, well, That's it right. seemed like now, and I would call people on that and say, is that what he asked you to do? Uh, oh gosh, no, I didn't even notice I was doing it. And that's that's really right. Fun. Yeah. 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 So as a giver, we, we, I hate, the, I don't like the word boundaries, because every time I hear it, it seems as though there's something to keep you out. Yeah. I have a boundary, don't touch my neck. Okay, so I'm, nothing's going to happen to my neck or anything else. Yeah. But if you have the intention to do what I ask you to do, and that means, if, especially if it gets into erotic work, mm -hmm. 
you can't be touching me somewhere else because that's what attracted you. Right. Touch me where I ask you to touch me. Yeah. And it's only three minutes or if you expand to five minutes. Yeah. But isn't it hard for us to keep yes. our attention yeah. on our intention? Yeah. Yeah. As if there's more or whatever. Yeah.